Hi everyone, good afternoon. If you are viewing our live now, please share uh, the live video to your uh, to your Facebook to help us uh, share about our topic today, which is about hearing assessment. So we shall wait for about one or two minutes more before we start uh, our live today officially. So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our live today, uh, which is jointly organized by Rotary Club of Kuchin Unity City and 20DB here in Kuchin. First of all, let me introduce myself. I am Yushan, audiologist from 20DB here in Kuchin, also one of the speakers today. So uh, today we are going to talk about hearing assessment and also uh, some frequently asked questions for audiologists. 那大家下午好,那我们今天会讨论一些关于听力的课题,所以呢,今天这个live是由两个主办法,其中一个是古晋的这个Rotary Club,so now let us welcome uh, the president of Rotary Club of Kuching Unity City, uh, Miss Amy Lin on the screen, uh, to present us an opening speech. Let's welcome uh, Miss Amy. Welcome to our live today, jointly organized by Rotary Club of Kuching Unity City and 20DB here in Kuching. My name is Amy. I'm the president of the club. On behalf of the Rotary Club of Kuching Unity City, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to our member, Dr. Mok. Dr. Mok is our Rotarian member of the Unity City. Dr. Mok is the founder of TV hearing and an experienced audiologist himself. Dr. Mok has been actively involved in many uh, vocational services as an audiologist to organize community projects in the past three years for the club in the health screening in the various locations in Kuching, as well as in rural area, to provide free hearing checking to the public. In the past two sessions of the virtual health forum, 20DB has also extended our knowledge in the importance of the mental health and also the speech therapy aspect. Today is our last session of the health forum, which is hearing therapy and assessment. Topics cover who is audiologist and what is their role? When do I need a hearing aid? Is it advisable to purchase a hearing aid online, etc.? Let us invite the three audiologists, Miss Lina, Yixuan, Miss Angelina, an audiologist of the 20DB to provide us an insight of the hearing aid and assessment. Hand over to you. Thank you.
Okay, sorry for the technical error. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, Miss Amy, for your opening speech. Let me introduce. Can you hear me now? Yeah, can everyone hear me? Yeah, okay. So let me introduce myself. I'm Lina, one of the audiologists from 20DB Hearing Coaching. So for today, two topics will be covered in this slide. We'll be talking about hearing assessment for children and adults in the first part. And the second part is about the frequently asked questions for audiologists. So the first part will be presented in a pre-recorded video. <clears throat> in this video, you will have a general idea of the type of hearing test we provide and get a brief overview of how we actually run or perform the test. So along the session, feel free to drop your questions or comments in the comment section below, and we will attend to them in the Q&A session. So in the we'll 那如果在这个直播的进行当中呢，如果你们有任何的疑问，可以在呃下方留言，我们会在问答环节一一为你们解答。Okay, so without further delay, let's go ahead and watch the video. We are the audiologists for 20 dB hearing coaching. Today, we are going to share about hearing assessment. Do you know that around 466 million people worldwide have hearing loss? Around 7% of these are children. Many think that hearing loss only affects the elderly, but actually it can develop at any age. So hearing tests not only focus on adults, but also on children from newborn babies too school age children. Do you want to know how we conduct the hearing test? Let's keep watching. So now I will show you how we usually run hearing tests on children. For babies and young children who are unable to follow simple instruction, we will run a test called autoacoustic emission OAE to test their hearing. In this test, we will put a earphone like tiny microphone in their ears and test the function of the which is our organ of hearing. This is an quick and easy test because it only takes about 3 minutes to complete the test and children who undergo the test do not have to give any response during the test. A pass in the test means the cochlea, the organ of hearing, is functioning well. Besides OAE, we have another test called auditory brain stem response, MR, to determine a child's hearing level. In this test, we will put earphones inside their ears and feel electrode on their heads to read their responses over the sound that we present through earphones. Apart from ABR, which requires children to sleep, we have another test called Visual Reinforcement Audiometry, VRA, which doesn't require children to sleep. In this test, the child is conditioned to turn towards the lighter toys when he or she hears a sound presented through a speaker or headphones. For older children who are able to follow instruction, we can also identify their hearing condition via a test called play audiometry. In this test, a child is conditioned to a play test when he or she hears the sound. Again, the sound is presented through a speaker or headphone. So now let's move on to hearing tests for adults, where hearing loss is most common among older adults. So approximately one-third of uh, adults over the age of 65 years old have some degree of hearing loss. So pure audiometry is used to find out the degree of hearing loss and the result from the test can help to determine if the hearing aid is suitable to improve their hearing. So the result from the test will be plotted on a chart, what we call an audiogram. 
As you can see, this is an audiogram. The particular axis represent darkness, uh, which measure in decibel. And uh, going down from the chart is uh, from the softer sound to the louder sound. So 20 dB is about the loudness of uh, whispering sound, and um, 100 dB is about the loudness of the grass mower. So next we move to horizontal axis of the audiogram, which uh, represent the pitch or we, uh, we measure in hertz. So from left, the low, lower pitch to the right, the higher pitch. So 250 hertz is uh, about the pitch of the running water tap and uh, 4 kilohertz is about the pitch of the birch. So based on the audiogram, you can categorize the degree of hearing loss into mouth hearing loss, moderate hearing loss, severe hearing loss and far hearing loss. So as you can see, the further down the chart, the results are caught, the more severe the hearing loss. So the next thing you need to know is the response of the softer level of sound measure at each pitch is plotted on the audiogram uh, as a circle for the right ear and X across for the left ear. I will explain about industrial hearing screening. We all know that noise can damage our hearing over time and it is one of the common causes of hearing loss in adults. So how loud is considered too loud? In general, sound above 35 decibel is dangerous depending on how long and how often you are exposed to work. So the higher the level of noise, the longer the time exposure, the greater the risk for hearing loss. So back to industrial hearing screening, it is actually a test intended for individuals with occupational noise exposure, such as construction and factory workers, policemen, army, and so on. So occupational noise refers to the noise that you are exposed to in your workplace. Basically, the test will be conducted in a soundproof booth with client city inside, and the audiologist will sit outside the booth presenting the tongue with an audiometer. The procedures of testing is actually quite similar to adult hearing tests. Hearing loss can have profound impacts on quality life at all age groups. For instance, adults will tend to avoid some social occasions, leading to isolation and depression, whereas for children, they will have speech and language delay, poor academic performance and loss of esteem. Actually, treating hearing loss can help to prevent this problem. So we have time to the end and we hope after today's sharing, everyone will have a brief idea of the hearing test available. Okay, uh, so if you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave your questions below. We will reply to them soon. So um, that's all. So thank you everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>
Uh, we have gathered a few questions today. Uh, I will take the first question, who is an audiologist? I think for most audiologists, this is the most frequently asked questions uh, by their client. So who are we? Usually when most people, when there is a problem with the ear, the first person they will think of or look for is an ENT specialist. So when they visit a ENT specialist, the ENT specialist will uh, assess and uh, detect any presence of a uh, medical condition of the ear or ear disease and give treatment when necessary. Um, if the ENT doctors determines that uh, there is no disease or medical condition of the ear, uh, but suspected that there is a hearing problem, which is the issue, then he or she will refer the patient to see an audiologist. So what is an audiologist? Audiologist is a healthcare professional specializing in identifying, diagnosing, and treat treating and monitoring disorder of the ears and uh, also including balance. So unlike ENT specialists who use medical or surgical means to treat ear problem and or ear disease, audiologists are trained to diagnose, manage, and treat hearing problems with non-medical treatments such as hearing aids. So uh, Chi 需要药物或者是医药方面的治疗，我们都会推荐他们去见耳鼻喉科医生。So, I hope that after this, you will have a idea of the audiologist job scope. So let's move to the second questions, Lina. Yeah, okay, thank you, Angelina. So I think by now, you know who we are and actually what we specialize in. So the next commonly asked question is, do I really need hearing aids? So I think this is probably one of the many questions that of, uh, many of you are asking. So before I get into this question, there's one point I would like to highlight. Actually, you should get your ear tested by a qualified audiologist prior to getting hearing aid. This is really, really important. The reason is that our hearing loss can be divided into temporary and permanent. So temporary hearing loss means it can be fixed. It is reversible. So common causes are like uh, excessive earwax or foreign body in your ear canal or build up of fluid due to middle ear infection. So if you receive appropriate treatment, then your hearing may return to normal. So in this case, hearing aid is not required. However, if you have permanent hearing loss, means that the problem cannot be fixed, it is irreversible. So it, mostly it could be due to aging or damage due to exposed to loud noise. So back to the question, do I really need hearing aids? Yes, in most cases, you need hearing aid if you are diagnosed with permanent hearing loss or if hearing loss is affecting your ability to understand speech. So hearing aid is one of the optimal options to actually minimize the impact of hearing loss on your daily life. And let me explain further. People tend to put off wearing hearing aids as there was a perception that only those with profound hearing loss would need to wear hearing aids. And this also created a stigma that wearing hearing aids is equivalent to disability or symbolized old age. But that's not true. Several studies also shown that even mild hearing loss can cause significant impacts on daily communication especially um, conversation in the noisy, crowded noises. Yeah, most people, you say, 
um, I can he hear, but I can't understand. This sounds familiar, right? Yeah. And then they also have trouble hearing over the phone, group meeting, and so on. And the good news is that 90% of those with hearing loss can actually be helped with hearing aid, especially during this uh, pandemic. Wearing masks has become the new norms. And wearing masks also actually can impair the ability for some people to communicate with ease as it prevents lips reading and reduce the level of speech transmitted from the mouth. So in this situation, wearing hearing aid can actually help to improve your speech understanding. So in this question, do I need a speaker? So actually, before buying a speaker, I recommend you to first do a test to see your speech level. This is because our speech level can be temporary and permanent. But if you have a temporary problem, you can reduce the level. 可是呢，如果你的听觉的问题是永久性的，比如像、嗯、老化的问题，或者是一些噪音所以造成的一些呃听力受损的话，那其实你就需要使用到助听器，这是因为助听器可以帮你听到比较清楚。其实很多人对助听器有一个呃误解，那我希望通过今天这个直播呢，大家对助听器可以有不一样的想法。很多人都觉得助听器其实只是适合给呃听力比较严重或者是听力受损完全听不到的人使用。其实也有很多研究显示，即使你的听力问题只是轻微的，又或者是你只有轻度的啊听力受损，其实助听器在很大的程度上对你来讲也是有很多的帮助的。尤其是像现在这个疫情的期间，每个人都要戴着口罩，一些听力有问题的人呢，他们因为需要靠看对方的嘴型来猜对方在说什么。因为我们戴口罩，其实把我们的嘴巴都遮挡住了，所以我们并不能猜到对方其实想跟我们表达什么。所以在这个情况下呢，其实戴助听器是有可以解决这个问题的。So hereby we are、uh, to end my part. We will present you with a video to show you. How the hearing letters hearing aid technology can help to overcome this adversity. Are you having difficulties hearing people with a face mask on? Are your parents having difficulty hearing you with a mask on? Hear better today with 20dB, your hearing professional. We provide and customize to your hearing needs. Number one Malaysia leading hearing center. Meet the new Unitron Discovery Next series. Assist in hearing soft speech. Hear speech blocked by a mask on. Stay safe. Stay classy. Stay with 20dB hearing. Your hearing professional. Improve your hearing with us today. So yep,、uh, the video has shown us how technology nowadays. Especially hearing aids can help in situation where everyone is on the mask and、uh, everyone have difficulty. I mean, most people have difficulty to hear other people、uh, speaking with a、uh, face and or with a、uh, mouth covering out by the mask. So um, from the I I I would say um, we do not please don't neglect the importance of hearing. Please uh don't uh treat hearing aid as a stigma uh like what Lina mentioned. Uh, hearing aid, if you really need hearing aids, uh it it doesn't only make for people with severe or profound hearing loss. It also make for people with very small hearing loss. Okay, so when we talk about uh getting a hearing aid, we often come across another question: Is it advisable to purchase hearing aid online? Um, so nowadays uh. Especially during this COVID nineteen pandemic, and on a shopping day,、uh, like today, online shopping day, twelve twelve, ah,、uh, many would prefer doing online shopping, where you can just promos, ah,、uh, offers and big discounts. And there is no doubt that it's very convenient to do online shopping nowadays, as ah,、uh, you just need a few clicks to complete the purchase. So back the, to the question, 
is it advisable to buy hearing aid online? Um, the question was often brought up by our client when they are in the midst of choosing hearing aid. They would say that uh, that particular online store is doing promotion uh, for hearing aid. So what makes the difference between their hearing aids and our hearing aids? Um, well, from professional point of view, I would say getting a hearing aid should be something more customized and personalized. We recommend proper hearing tests, uh, which we have shown in the earlier video. Test your hearing in a proper sound treated room with well calibrated uh, equipment before you purchase hearing aid. And also, we encourage proper uh, consultation with our audiologists to choose and to discuss uh, what type of hearing aids is right for your hearing and your lifestyle before you make a purchase. And also, after the purchase, we recommend your hearing aid to be fine-tuned based on your hearing progress. And also, you may need to service your hearing aid from time to time to make sure that you receive the best optimal uh, outcome from your hearing aid. So, I would say it's important that uh, you get your hearing aid from a trusted hearing care professional or at least from an online store that is uh, recognized by certain standards like ASO. Now, we just talked about that it's not suitable to buy on the internet, especially in this situation, the internet is a very convenient thing. Now, we just talked about the point is to buy on the internet. 它是其实是需要一个配套的，就是你不能随随购买、随随便便的购买助听器，你需要检查你的听力先，然后跟跟你的听力学家讨论你的听力情况，才能够选择到啊、呃、适合你的助听器。然后呢，这些助听器不是说啊、呃、买了就可以用一辈子，你需要定时的检查，并且护理你的助听器。这样你才能够从你的助听器那边啊获益啦。OK， OK， so um basically we have gone through all our topics today. We talk about ah、uh, hearing assessment, which ah、uh, we show in the video how we run hearing test for adults for pediatric. We also talked about ah、uh, those ah、uh, who are high risk for hearing loss, like those working in um factory or noisy places. And we also introduce our profession, which is audiologist profession, and、uh, we discuss about hearing aids and the importance of hearing aids and whether it's advisable to buy hearing aids online. So now it has come to our Q and A session. So、um, it's time for you,、uh, for those who have who have question, do feel free to drop your question in the comments column, and then we. The three audiologists will try to answer your question in this session. Okay, so if you have any questions, you can just put them in the comments below. Okay, okay. 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 So newborn hearing screening is not readily available to every baby in some cities in Malaysia. Only high cases are screened for hearing loss. What would you recommend for parents to look out for in the week that can be suspicious of the hearing loss? Yeah. So if you would you like to take the question? Ah,、uh, yep. Yeah, in Malaysia, newborn hearing screening is not available for every baby, like Ah、uh, Madeleine said. Um, so what would I recommend? So um, I think with uh the, I think the especially the new parents now、uh, should be aware that hearing is um、uh, is something very important for your child、uh, before they can develop. Language. If they cannot hear, meaning they cannot develop their speech and language, and、uh, there is a research. I think this is a well-known research showing that wow,、well, in one thousand newborn babies, there are three to four newborn will be、uh, identified with ah、uh, hearing difficulties. So, if you suspect that ah、uh, your baby is ah、uh, is having hearing ah、uh, difficulty. 
talk to. We would encourage you to seek uh, advice at least from EMT surgeon or pediatrician first because they are, they are they are the first uh, medical doctor that most parents are working of when their babies are doing, uh, when the parents suspect that their babies is having hearing loss. And usually the ENT and pediatrician you recommend uh, your child to see an audiologist to get it, uh, your baby hearing screen by the audiologist. Okay. And then uh, of course, uh, how do you check your baby uh, hearing before you bring them over to a uh, pediatrician or ENT or audiologist? Uh, there are signs and symptoms that you can look into. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, for newborn baby, if they are not structured to loud sound like the door banging, door banging noise, then uh, you should some, suspect something is not right with your baby hearing. And also, um, we also see this uh, monitor your your child's hearing progress by monitoring your speech and language development progress. In other words. Say like three months, um, your baby should start making sounds like clean sound, like woo, 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 and then like uh seven to eight months, uh, you your your baby should have this uh, uh babbling sound already, and then some of them could start to say uh can could start to wake by by when uh, they are instructed to do so. If they are not developed according to this uh, development milestone, then uh, you need to take quick action, bring your child to see medical doctors or to see audiologists or to see uh, even speech therapists to get their uh, hearing and speech um, speech progress check. Okay. So do you have another question? Yes, there is another question from the, yeah, from Magdalene of all. If I suspect my baby may have been lost, should I wait until my baby is older to get tested or should I get her straight away? Okay, what do you think, Nina? Yeah, I think for this Yes, if you suspect that your baby may have or may experience hearing loss, I think regardless of the age, you should send your baby to test your ear. Yeah, I think many parents say we have the perception that we only can get our child for to do hearing test when they are two or three years old. But uh, actually, since birth, since uh, they are still baby, actually. We our, our uh, audiologist actually can get their ears tested. Yeah, so if you can take that your children have hearing loss, you should take their to send them to the audiologist to get their ears tested straight away. Don't wait. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Let's see we have questions or not. So we have another question here. Okay. How often do I need to come back for more or adjust my hearing aids? And is it necessary to wear two hearing aids? Yeah, so Angelina, would you want to share with us? Mm, okay, so I um I think I will divide to two questions. Uh. So how often do I need to come back for follow-up or adjust my hearing aids? Um if you are for usually for uh our uh, our clients who just fitted with our uh, hearing aids, the appointment will be uh closer, main uh for us to monitor their progress with their hearing aids. And uh, we will collect their feedbacks to do adjustment when necessary. So the how often do I need to come back is actually depends on uh, how is the how stable is the patient with the hearing aids, uh, I must say. So if uh, the patient is a very experienced user, uh, then uh, maybe the 
appointment or the follow up will be uh, slightly uh, further apart lah, as compared to a new user, new hearing aid user. And uh, the second question is, uh, and is it necessary to wear two hearing aids? Um, actually, um, this one we need to uh, see. Uh, we need to. We we only know after we do. We have the hearing assessment done. We need to know the hearing conditions. Um, after assess the hearing, uh, the patient's hearing conditions, then we will suggest. Uh, is it necessary to wear both sides? And uh, if uh, for a patient with uh, both sides, both of the ears having hearing loss, then I will uh, suggest uh, to have hearing loss on the both, uh, both sides. We also need to take into account of the degree of a hearing loss. Uh, so uh, we, will, I will, uh, we will need to really sit down and uh, discuss with, uh, after having the hearing uh, results from the patient uh, after the hearing test. Okay. Um, how, how do you think, Yishen and Kina? Do you have anything you want to add on? Uh, so to add on, uh, basically, uh, I think we are given uh, two years. There are there are reason for us to be given two years. Uh, we need balanced hearing. With two balanced hearing, we can uh, identify uh, some location. And also with two balanced hearing, we can uh, uh, understand speech better, uh, understand other better, especially in noisy situation. So these are the uh, benefits with uh, two balanced ear or two, two balance hearing. So therefore, uh, if you have difficulties of hearing in both sides of your ears, uh, then we will encourage you to wear two hearing aids. But of course, uh, there are situations that uh, it doesn't allow us to fit clients with two hearing aids. For example, some have a physical impairment for those uh, who, who were born without uh, ear, the, the physical ear, and also for those, um, for some elderly, when you put on two hearing aids uh, on them, in some, for, uh, I mean, for some elderly, they will have difficulty uh, to differentiate the sound coming from two ears. That, that situation is a situation where we, we call a uh, minority interference. So, um, like what Angelina had mentioned, we really need to sit down and check the uh, client's hearing status. And after that, uh, we only then we can uh, identify whether the, the client is recommended to wear two hearing aids or he is only suitable for one, one hearing aid. Yes. So we have the other question, I think. Okay, the next question. So, the next question is Do you advise everyone to perform hearing assessment like body checkup and how frequent do you recommend? Yeah, actually, um, hearing assessment I mean, compared to other uh, testing. Most of the people will tend to neglect the importance of uh, hearing assessment. Yeah, actually, for those uh, who are 65 years old, we actually recommend uh, them to do a hearing assessment at least once a year so that we can actually measure the hearing uh, uh, level and, yeah. and then we can provide the options or recommendations if after the check in. Yeah. And then the, the next question is Angelina, would you like to, to answer that this question? Okay, uh, so the question is in Chinese. Uh, I, um, I will explain English first. Uh, so uh, as, sh as shown in the video just now, we have a uh, hearing test available for um, different 
uh, age population. Uh. So uh, although the father is uh, already 65 years old, we still have a hearing test available. Um, so I will um, advise the, you, you can come for a hearing check. Then we, uh, after we will assess the hearing, then uh, see uh, what the next step uh, that uh, we can go, whether your father needs some hearing aids or is there any other medical condition that cause a uh, hearing problem. So, so we uh, give you the papa. We recommend he can first do a hearing test. We have, since he is already sixty-five years old, he we also have suitable. He is suitable to do a hearing test. So, I recommend he first do a hearing test to let us understand his hearing level and his hearing capacity. So, he can do a hearing test. 如果有需要，我们会根据他的情况，看需不需要去见医生，再做啊、uh, 更多的啊、uh, referral 啦，这样子讲。OK， 那、yeah. so OK， so we have the yeah. Question from Natalie again. Yeah. So for someone who uses earphones or headphones every day, how long the use is advisable, or how long the use is detrimental to the hearing? Yeah. So I think wearing, uh, listening to music through the earbuds or headphones, yeah, it's like become a trend now. Yeah, and then the last must. Actually, uh, we will recommend you to not to increase the volume, like just to cover the noise. Or when you use the headphone, when someone talk to you, um, next to you, you can't hear. Actually, that one is considered too loud. Yeah, and then how long for you? Actually, we will recommend uh, not more than one hour at a time. Yeah. Take a break in between. Yeah, that one would be more better to do. So, anything you would like to add on? You can add on here. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I believe that we have uh, uh, complete all the uh, questions. We have answered all the questions uh, drop down in the, in the comment column just now. But if you have further questions, do not hesitate to contact us at the, at the contact number here. And uh, also, if you, have, uh, if you are looking for services like hearing assessment, hearing trials, speech therapy, and also you need counseling services, psychological services, behavioral assessment, etc. Do feel free to contact us as well. And our location is shown here, is shown here at, at the slideshow. Also, uh, as uh, we mentioned earlier, this lab is jointly organized by uh, 20 dB Hearing and also uh, Rotary Club of Coaching Unity City. So if you want to learn more about uh, the Rotary Club, uh, do feel free to contact them at the uh, at this number shown at the column below here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I believe um, we are approaching the end of our live session today. So before we end, uh, let's invite uh, Miss Emmeline again on the screen, uh, the president of uh, Rotary Club of Coaching Unity City, uh, to give us an, uh, a closing speech. Welcome. Uh, Miss Emmy. Hi everyone. Uh, thank yeah. you. Thank you, Yusheng, Lina, and Angelina for such educational and informative sharing in the health aspect of a hearing. On behalf of a Rotary Club, I would like to again to extend our thanks to a 20 dB audiologist for a health hearing session. Year 2020 is a challenging year for many people around the world, which affected by COVID-19 pandemic. 
many have been impacted by uncertainties. Rotary Club is a non-profit organization with over 1 million members worldwide. Rotarian are the people of action. We serve community by our different profession and gather our strengths and resources and work together with the local government, with the healthcare, with the uh, other NGO and the business community to help to improve life of others. And um, I'm very grateful to be part of the, the um, Rotary Club and the community to be able to serve, to improve life of others. If you are, if you are interested to be part of the uh, volunteer or the member of Rotary Club, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you everyone for your time. Bye. Okay, yeah, sorry because our light is a bit down, so we will fix our problem right away. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, we will now, Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, we have come to the end of our lives today. So uh, thank you everyone for your life support and uh, if, and again, uh, if you need our, our help or our assistance, do not hesitate to contact us. So that's all. Thank you everyone. Uh, stay safe. Uh, thank you and uh, also Merry Christmas in advance. Bye-bye. Bye-bye everyone. Bye.